Okay, guys. <laughs> I'm claiming this is the best playing lesson you're ever going to get. And you're going to be disappointed because I'm not going to play. This lesson doesn't need a golf course. I don't need to play for this lesson. I have a lot of students that ask me the same question. They say, okay. And they're, and they're usually, at least mentally, they think they're prepared. I'm going to get worse before I get better. I'm going to play worse golf on the course than I do now while I'm trying to make these changes. And my answer is you shouldn't. And my reasoning for that is very simple. You shouldn't be trying to do something on the golf course you're not totally comfortable with. Okay? So here's the thing. The idea of practicing your drills is so that the swing you're trying to get to becomes the comfortable, the most comfortable swing. I ask people this all the time. When we throw a ball, it just feels, you're not thinking, okay, where's my elbow? Where's my arm? When do I release my wrist? There's nothing technical about it. Just throw the ball. So I ask my students all the time. I make them throw a ball or swing a bat so they can see really good sequence because they all sequence that good. And I said, so were you ever terrible at throwing a ball? And they'll go, no. And I'm going, well, yeah, you were. You're just so young, you don't remember it. I don't care. Little toddler Timmy out there throwing the ball like this. Nobody's going, your technique's no good. And eventually, he watches and he learns and he gets to good. So by the time you're an eight-year-old little leaguer, you can throw the ball. You're learning how to sequence a golf swing. So you're in your toddler stage. But the thing about it is you've got to put in a lot of reps to where that sequence starts to feel good. But it's not going to feel good on the golf course tomorrow. It's just not. And then they tell me this, okay, when I go play golf, I don't want to regress. I'm like, okay. So here's what I want you to understand. And I want you to think this through before I give you the answers. We're talking about predominantly iron swings when I'm talking sequence. I sequence everything. You have to. But we're working on the irons to start with. So I'm just going to talk about the irons. You're going to go play nine holes this afternoon, okay? And you're at least a reasonable golfer. I don't care, 25 handicap or 30 or less or something. And you go out and play golf, and I want you to answer this question. How many full swing irons are you going to make over a two-hour period in nine holes of golf? I want you to think about it for a minute. And let's go through the first hole. It's a par four. You hit your driver. You're going to pull out a seven iron, an eight iron, a nine iron. I don't know, something, and you're going to hit it, and you don't hit it on the green. Your next iron is not going to be a full swing iron. It's going to be a chip shot. I'm not talking about I topped one or shanked one. I'm just talking about general golf, okay? One swing with this, with an iron on that hole. You're going to go to a par three. One swing with this. Next hole is a par five. Maybe one swing with this. Maybe driver three with no long irons. Maybe a wedge after that, okay? So I contend this. Over nine holes, two hours of golf, with nine shots with this club, with an iron. Full swing. You're not going to fix your swing and you're not going to mess it up. So I tell my students, if you're on the golf course and you ever start thinking, okay, Kevin said do this. I, I'm okay with even the takeaway move. That's a backswing this far. If you notice Justin Thomas, he actually watches his club do this about every iron swing. He'll put it right there, look at it, and then he'll go through the swing. But that ends, that thought ends right here. But if you've got a downswing thought that you're trying to figure out on the downswing and you're on the golf course, you're in big trouble. Because now the golf game is technical, and it shouldn't be technical. When you're playing golf, all you should be trying to do is feel the game. Swing your most comfortable swing, whatever it is. And take that swing to the golf course. And the only two things I tell my students to do when they're playing golf is think about the tempo of the golf swing and balance the finish. 100% balance the finish regardless of what you're doing. So I would take that golf swing and I would tell them, make a practice swing and try to make your real swing feel as, as close to the practice swing as possible. So on the practice swing, I'm going to focus on tempo, go back go through and try to hold my finish and I want to hold that finish you can spin the club if you've hit it good you can do whatever you want but keep the lower body there until the ball hits the ground that's the only thing I care about good tempo good balance when I'm done and I want you to make a practice swing first and tell yourself that's my A plus swing and then you're going to hit the ball and you're only going to grade tempo and balance and try to make both of those swings feel identical now, I will tell you that when I have students do this, the, I'm making, giving me grades, A, B plus, whatever. And they're usually giving me pretty good grades when they're hitting it good. I love the first time they top one, score one, shank one, and I say, what grade? And they're like an F or a D. And I'm like, why? And they're saying, because I hit it terrible. I'm like, we're not focusing on hitting the ball. That's the whole purpose of this lesson, this playing lesson. When you're playing golf, try to continually think I'm going to make as good a practice swing as I can with as good a balance. That almost fell over there, so that's a B because I almost fell in the pool. So I'm going to try and balance the swing out. If I do good tempo and good balance, no matter where the ball goes, 
I'm going to give myself a good grade. If I fall off balance and I hit it this close to the hole, I still get a bad grade because it wasn't a good swing. And that's the way we start focusing on how to swing the golf club and not how to hit the ball. As long as my focus is on where the ball is going to end up and how I hit it, then I'm going to be focused on hitting the ball. There's just no two ways around it. And I want to focus on swinging the club. That's why a lot of my drills I'm talking about is take the ball away, focus on the swing for a while, then add the ball, make the change you've got to make to make the club face angle come back to zero, whatever that's grip or flexion or whatever you're going to do, and then just worry about the swing. So once again, A plus tempo and balance, back good tempo, finish, hold my balance. Okay, guys, let's go to work.